Namaste, welcome everyone today. I am here to look with you at something much deeper and more profound than an answer. If a question comes from the mind and the answer is to answer the mind, it will not remain with you. Nothing of what we perceive by thought or feeling, sensation, memory, and let's including that, uh, the personal sense of self, nothing there is stable. If you think of yourself in personal terms, then you will have to admit, I am always changing. The way I feel is changing, what I think is changing, who I think I am is changing, who I want to be is changing, who I used to be is changing. Nothing there is stable. So if we are going to search for something, starting from that state of mind, whatever you may imagine you perceive or understand, is equally unstable, if it is only existing in the mind and to the person who is a most inconsistent and unstable phenomenon. What has satsang got to offer anyone? It can only be, at best, a kind of mirror that reflects something that is not a thing, not a thought, not a memory, not an idea, not even an answer, not even an experience, because innumerable experiences we have had, which one have we kept? They are all floating by like clouds passing in the great expanse of the sky. The person itself, until now or recently, has been placed in the position of a factual self, like, this is what I am. This is what I am. But this I amness is not the true I amness. It is only a reflection of consciousness in the mind that is unstable. And this is why when you feel, I am this and I am that, and it keeps on changing. So I am not here to address that state of identity, because it is not stable. It is not even healthy. It is not well. It is not that which is eternal in us. So if satsang has any value at all, it would be that through satsang, through gathering like this meeting, this today, now, already started, that somehow some deep recognition happens inside you of something that is beyond the world that is experienced in your mind. And I am not trying to excite you, for a great experience of awakening. Not like that. Because if awakening comes in the form of a great experience, and and we are rolling on the floor and singing Alleluia and stuff, it will also pass. So, don't cling to any desire like that. What I am pointing, and hope that somehow it is recognised, is that which is always here. It doesn't belong to the mind, nor to dreams, or to desires. It is 
always stable, always complete, always harmonious, always content, always silent, always happy. And I will call that one's true being. If we are searching for an experience, it is not somebody's experience. It is here, before the sense of the somebodiness that we take ourselves to be, is formed in the mind. The idea we have of who we are is an idea appearing in the mind. What you truly are is before your mind. So I don't know at this point who will listen in such a way, not deep, 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 because the self is not deep, 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 or shallow, shallow. It's it doesn't exist especially on one dimension. It is a total. If it is already here, and if we could conceive of a time that is millions, billions of years ago, that which is called truth, or the pure self, or the Parabrahman, or the Absolute, or the ultimate truth, has always been here, unchanged, undisturbed by the changeful waves of the mind. If we could conceive or project of some idea called a thousand, a million years from now, it will still be ever perfect and pure. Now, the mind might say, but we don't know, that's a fantasy. So I'm not going to speak about time to come or times past, because we'll have to go to imagination for that. I'm speaking, what about now? Then? What is here that is stable, complete, free of anxiety, perfect in nature, peaceful, happy, natural, effortless. I don't want to tell you more about it, because only by discovering it, not creating, it cannot be created, it cannot be found by some creative exercise or process, but by simple, simple investigation, simple and profound understanding. You don't have to be an intellectual. Sometimes too much intellectual is not going to help you even. And everyone and everything arise or appears in it, including the idea we have of ourself, our current idea, because we always had an idea about ourselves, and we keep throwing them out and adopting new ones. So if there is anyone who is open to, not just open to, but yearning for some reason to discover what this is, then you may show your hand, if it is you. I'll read something for a bit to let you to relax, so you can relax a little bit. And first, maybe Ryan signs something I can read. Okay, just a few words. Just listen, don't think for a moment. It says, Love your true self. Love your true self. Which is, we don't know. Is it love your true self? Is there a false self? Love your true self. If this was said as one statement, love yourself, love your true self, if we don't know where to start, what did it mean? So it goes on to say, which is naturally happy and peaceful and bright. 
Awaken is like a call. Awaken to your own nature and all delusion melt away like a dream. Is this a poet speaking here? Let's see. How much pleasure you take in acquiring worldly goods, worldly experiences. But to find happiness, you must give them all up, meaning don't be attached to them. The sorrows of duty, like the heat of the sun, have scorched your heart. The sorrows of duty, let's call duty your obligations, your responsibility, what you feel you have to do. It says what do you know? Like the heat of the sun has scorched your heart. But let stillness fall upon you with its sweet and cooling showers, and you will find happiness. For the world is nothing, it is only an idea. Now some people go, Whoa, slow down. Don't say that. The world is just an idea. How can you say the world is just an idea or a set of ideas? Hmm. I said at some point, if you conceive of yourself as a person, which we all do at some point, then are you not always changing? Your thoughts are changing, mind is changing, feelings are changing, the place you live sometimes is changing, your family is changing, your relationships are changing, desires are changing, even memories are changing, our projections are changing, everything. Have you ever perceived anything at all which is not changing, including yourself? Take a moment. Whatever you perceived in the mind or through the senses are changing. Sometimes you may say, Yes, but I, you know, I always enjoy having cheesecake. But there's going to be a time you don't enjoy it. You will not enjoy it. On your birthday, it comes, mm, don't want it. And nobody can say why. Because nothing you will enjoy or suffer always. It's the nature of the mind that things are always changing. But if everything is changing, if everything is changing, there must be something that witnesses that everything is changing. I'm not being mystical now. I'm not being metaphysical. Pure, simple, common sense. I'm speaking. No, you say, "Oh, my mind is always changing." You know, last week I called myself a revolutionary. Now I'm calling myself a pacifist. Before I was this, and now I'm that. Even stable profession. I used to be a doctor. I used to be a scientist. Now I just I call myself a gardener. It was always changing. Have you seen or experienced anything that is not changing? The world of the universal world, the manifest world, by law, is always changing. But something must be there that observes this changefulness. Even the most subtle things are changing. There is awareness of it, naturally. But we just forget that, without even trying, naturally you perceive things are changeful. Even when we believe, and sometimes we try to believe, this will never change. I'm going to love you exactly forever and ever and ever and ever. I will never think badly about you. 
Yeah? In front of God I say this. I recognize that laughter. We know that is not true. But we love we love the feeling of just saying something eternal and something forever and ever. Even we get married. Until death do us part. <laughs> also one day we were sitting under the moon and uh, we were looking up and one of our Sangha sisters says, Oh, look how beautiful the moon is. I said, Yeah, it's very beautiful. She said, I wish it was always like that every day. I said, No, you don't. You wish today. But after a few days we're going, I'm tired of this round moon. I like the Shiva moon. What's a you cannot sustain unbroken connection and belief in anything you experience. So I'm not going to look and talk any more about that. I'm going to go to some place more subtle than that. If all these things are changing, and our witness to be changing, that which observes them changing must be, relative to them, not changing. Reflect. Supposing we see two balls on a string, swinging, swinging, swinging. Can any of them evaluate what is vertical? Everything is moving. So therefore, if one is moving, there must be someone to something to say. Well, yes, it no, nothing is still. Everything is moving. That which is able to observe all things are moving, whether they are thought or feeling or memory, or projection, or desire. Sometimes saying, "I always wanted this." Okay, you have it. Do you always want it? No. So knowing that, I say, that in which all the things are coming and going and are perceived. That which is unchanging, that is stable, that is yourself. That is the place of the self. It cannot be seen with the senses or with the mind. It is not an object. Because it is not an object, all things and all objects, as subtle or gross as they are, are perceived very clearly. It is without desire. Therefore, it is without judgment. Therefore, it perceives clearly. Not wanting anything from the world of the changeful, it is ever at peace. And yet, whatever we perceive, whatever is perceived in it, none of it can exist without it, that which perceives it. What's the point of all of this, Muji? Well, if you have a desire, a yearning, an urge to find that, because everyone is troubled by something, why are we troubled by things? Because you want them to be a certain way, and they won't obey your desire. <laughs> Wrong or right? Yes. I have a fix. I believe this is like that, and it turns out to be like that. Mm, you know, the things. Trying to make stable that which is by nature unstable, we feel frustrated. And the one who is feel frustrated is also not stable. Frustrated today, abundantly happy the next day, then really miserable the third day. Nothing is consistent in the realm of feelings and thoughts or images. that which perceives them, but which itself is not an idea, or a thought, or a feeling, or even a sensation, or an idea, or an identity, that is your stable place. How can it be recognised? I repeat in a simpler way. If you want to know, to discover, that which is beyond the mind, then whatever you see, whatever feelings you have, no matter how delicious it is, it's fine. If a beautiful feeling comes, 
Don't throw it away. Enjoy. It's because soon it will go anyway. And replaced by a not a nice feeling or a more beautiful feeling, but all of it is passing. It says, don't become attached to any of these. Because if you are attached, don't curse the feeling. Let the feeling be. Enjoy while it's enjoyable. When it goes, don't cry. This is the purpose of saying, don't attach or identify with anything you perceive. If you do this, you will not feel disappointed. If you are aware of the mind, traffic, comings and goings, but you don't follow them, you don't uh, attach yourself to them, and you continue just observing, but with this detached observing, at some point, it's as though they move further away from you, and they don't feel so impactful. It's as though the mind can be like this, and somehow the idea or your experiencing feel like this also. So, whoa! Sometimes people come to me and say, Guruji, Guruji, sorry. Please put your hand on my head. I say, yeah, okay, put my hand on your head. Help me, bless me, Guruji. Why? What's happening? My mind is going crazy. Now, supposing I were to say to you, you know, your mind can be totally crazy, and you can be totally at peace. So, but how, 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 please, how, how, sound like a dog. How, 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 okay, how do I do this? And I'm saying, just, it's okay, okay. Let the mind go, let it happen. Don't try to stop your mind. Eh? Just watch it for a moment. But don't get involved in it. Can anybody hear this? It's answering and responding to the question I ask you. Would you be up for discovering that stillness, which is always present in you, which is naturally complete, naturally happy, naturally peaceful, and it is not dull, it is not boring, it is not rigid, it is the most natural. It is yourself. I am attending to this question. If you stay observing the energy, the movement of the mind, and you stay only like witnessing, just be aware that it is happening. Not actively witnessing, not watching what is going on and try to put down, write the story of it, but just as though like a neutral awareness of all things. But stay as the neutral awareness, whatever comes in the picture. It is OK. You may notice them. You don't have to try and close your eyes or respond. And even if something reacts like, I don't want to see this, but that is also seen and perceived in the neutral space. If you continue to stay like this, because sometimes the mind itself will come and say, I can't do this, it's boring. And you may think it is you saying this, but it's only a thought. And if that thought is believed in, what happens? You find that there is a you who feel very disturbed by it, which you are experiencing through your imagination. So stay like this, just being aware. And at some point, it is as though all this noise is replaced by a field of peace. You didn't do anything for this. You are not a peacemaker. There is peace. And when you did not create it, you will know it is natural. It is here by itself. And the mind stuff, the personal stuff, the memories, the abuse, the projections, the wars, they feel very much like more distant, like a voice in the desert. And something is just here, and it feels naturally, I am here. But not as the shape I have been holding to be myself. Whatever shape, whatever history I have held to be myself is also belonging to the voice in the desert, more and more distant. Now it is just a field of being. Stay with this field. Sometimes the mind says, OK, good, got it, got it. 
Thank you. Kurti, thank you. Ciao, ciao. See you next week. Boom. You got it? No. The one who feels I've got it is also just an idea of yourself that thinks it's got something, and that also will go. Every idea will go. Stay only conscious of your consciousness. First, you're conscious of your mind. Then you're conscious of your mind and your sense of person. Then you're conscious that you're conscious. When you're conscious that you're conscious, everything becomes light. Joy floods your being. A natural silence. A natural feeling of well-being. Beyond even the sense of patience or impatience, or well or unwell, beyond the field of opposites, it's almost indescribable. All I can say, its nature is peaceful, it's without agitation. And I want to say something now if you're listening, because I'm not going to say too much because I don't believe in giving too many things like this. What I'm speaking, if you can see it, you will not feel overload. What I am sharing now, if you can directly see and... You will not feel, this is too much. You will not feel. It will only feel, oh, I didn't get that, if it's going into the bank of your mind which cannot retain things anyway for very long, not authentically. If you wish to discover yourself, let me tell you now, there is not a lot of things you need to learn. It is not about amassing large amount of knowledge, but more realising where you are looking from, not just what you are looking at. We are used to paying attention to a lot of movement in the mind. But when you discover that there is only just this looking, and this looking is simply happening in you, when you say, but you are who? Oh, who am I? You cannot produce some details about you. It's like you're, you're the space itself. Don't tell anybody. They'll think you're crazy. And you'll be crazy to tell them. Keep it to yourself. Keep marinating your attention just on what I'm saying. All awakened beings know exactly what I'm sharing with you. Stay with it. Stay with it. Until gradually, all this duality uh, and the noise of it uh, drops away. And I will tell you something. Every living being is searching for this. We are just not aware that it is this. What you are searching for is what? Rest. Because every time we touch the mind stuff, and person and personality and what kind of person you want to be, you disturb yourself. But we are so accustomed to the disturbance that we tolerate it and think one day, if only I get this Lamborghini, I'll be really happy and I will be complete. Some people are looking for something, some object, that when they find it, they say, then I'll be happy. And you know what happiness is? To be content. You know what contentment is? To be still. Not to be at peace. To be without desire. When you are complete and happy, you have no desire. All desires trouble us, but nobody tell you. No one can say, stop desiring. Listen, you are trying to take away my rights? I have the right to desire. And the truth is, you do. 
we have the, 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 the freedom to desire even the whole world you can desire but you will not be happy. Now, can we live a life in personhood and be happy? Of course, you can re- attain a certain degree of happiness. But complete happy? No. Because there's nothing in the world or in any world which you may get and you'll be content with always. Not even yourself. If somebody leave you and say, listen, create the best idea of yourself. I would like to be this and that. I'd like to be <laughs> And you were to get this, at some point, you start to think, can I exchange this for this bit? And can I do this? It is the nature of the mind that we experience in this way. And we can continue. Now, I want to give you some good news. It's going to sound like good news at the moment. It's just a little break. When you discover, as you're discovering, discovering that unchanging self, no? Because the mind is going, you're taking everything away. Your mind will still be perceived. But its influence will be weakening. And sometimes we're happy. My mind will still be there. Oh, you mean I can be, I can be the self and still have my mind? Something is thinking like that. The mind is thinking like that. I'll still be part of you. Yes, yes, you'll be there. It's okay. But less and less influential. Less and less influential. Less and less important. Because the nature of the being is that it is self-content. Does it mean that, oh, I mustn't like flowers because I'm the unique, I'm ultimate, I don't like flowers? No, all this is natural for us. You want to dance, dance, haha. In fact, you probably do it even more better now because you're not trying to be good at it. It's just arising out of your joy, whatever is happening. So, one who is awake, you will not hear them cursing somebody or having strong opinions about something. Because they have seen that opinions are very fickle and they merely make you miserable. They have a choice to work with it more, Ah, let it go. In fact, this is what everyone is doing. We are wanting an experience, having it, and then uh, letting it go. You have to let it go, because if you keep holding on, you feel it starts to become miserable. You have to let it go. And actually, at some point, We recognize the greatness of just being detached from things. Not killing them, but becoming less attached to them. When you're less attached to them, you discover what you are already. You continue just to notice that uh, mind is coming. Of course, mind is also a wonderful aspect of ourself. All that we experience, the diversities in life, the beautiful sunsets, that lovely dress, that lovely piece of pizza, whatever. <laughs> enjoy. There's nothing wrong. So, oh, thou shalt not enjoy pizza because now you are a free person. That's nonsense. They will be enjoyed, but they will be momentary. And when they go, you will not cling. That's the nature of a natural life. Not saving up things to be happy with for a long time. You are the happiness that you are enjoying. As you discover this, I don't want to talk in detail too much. I think my pointing is simple enough. All that is required is to follow it. Try it out for yourself. Taste and see. In the Bible is something wonderful, a sentence I remember. It says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Simple words, no? Like a child, you can say, Taste the ice cream and see if you like it. Mm. Yeah, it's very nice. It says, taste what? This guidance, this looking, this contemplation, and see not if the Lord is good. You will find 
Where's the Lord? Lord, do you like that? No, here. In the heart of your heart. Now, maybe your attention is drifting a little bit now. But I have pointed a very simple thing. This pointing has always been in the world, but the world is not in it. There are some beings who have have seen your faces for two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years, still fighting with the mind. Sometimes I will make a certain contemplation, and some people listen and they say, "I think it's a bit too advanced for some people right now to be giving out my sailor just just a little bit. It's okay. Like maybe it's too much for the mind the way people are thinking. I say, "Ah, oh, have you yourself digested this? Maybe we have to go back to basics, because I have not found anything that I've shared that I want to throw away. In fact, if you understand just this little thing, you will find that you don't need any other little thing, or that any other thing is just another version of this little thing. If there's a hundred doors in your journey of self-discovery, and I tell you, any one of them you can take, the blue door, pink door, brown door, mauve door, Glass door, wood door, any one you can take. But why? Why is the brown and why is the blue? But just if you, just because, just to suit you, because on the other side is the same place you will find. That's how generous the Lord of the Universe is, in accordance with the temperament which it created within each form. Follow your temperament, but follow earnestly, and you will find me. Say. Now I point a very simple thing. Sometimes the mind, the mind will probably go, "Listen, this is too easy. It's not. It's not exciting." Listen, uh, I was watching one comedian. He was telling me, "It stays in my. It came just now. I don't know why. It's like this." He was saying that uh, his sister, he loves. They loved watching television all the time. So there's one. Um, one show in England about crime, you know, about the police and crime and trying to catch criminals and so on. And uh, the, it was called Crime Watch. And so he was talking to his sister, you know, you, she said, he says, do you do it? You don't, uh, I, you, what about your favorite program, Crime Watch? She says, I don't watch it anymore. Um, it's not as good as it used to be. <laughs> it's not as good as it used to be? What did it mean? <laughs> We're not catching enough criminals, or there's too many. I don't know what it means. It means that whatever you find to be so interesting at some point, you'll not be interested in it. Can the self be the same? Well, if we are strongly attached to our mental idea of ourself, even the realization of the self will not be interesting for you. It will just seem like another thing. For a while, and this is fine, because, thankfully, I don't have a commission to go and change the world. There is one called Bodhisattva. He says, as long as there is ignorance in the world, he will not enter Nirvana until everybody else has gone in, and then I'll come in and close the door. I said, "Thank you, Mr. Bodhisattva. See you later, okay? <laughs> Find the truth you are. Do not delay, because man will tell you, "I'm coming." as though you can find something uh, better. So you know, I know it's great, I know it's wonderful, I know it's eternal, I know that everything is perfect, but I'm coming. <laughs> so, the manifestation is 
God's joke. In a way. Who is God? He's here all in everyone he is there. Not absolutely. But also absolutely. Find another book. The one who understands this is saying, I am not only free of bondage and liberation. But I thought that's what you're talking about, Gregory. He's saying, I'm not only free of bondage, I mean in the mind and all this stuff, I'm free also of liberation. But how can he be free of liberation? Liberation means to be free. It means I'm free of the obsession with and the concept of liberation. I'm free beyond the concept of freedom. Strange or is okay? Okay, let's try another one. I am not only free of purity and impurity. I am not only free of purity and impure. But I thought we want to be pure, no? He says, I am free even of the sense of purity and impurity. Why says purity and impurity? Of the interrelated opposite. I'm free of bad and good. I'm not only free of separation and union, but I thought we were supposed to be harmony and union. So I'm free of these things. I'm free of them as they appear in the mind, that's what he's speaking. Understand? He says, I am freedom itself. I am everywhere, like space. I'm going to part here for a moment, okay? Just this bit. I'm not only free of desire. I'm free of desirelessness also. Are you with me? I'm not free of bondage. I'm free of even freedom. Still with me? Mm. Okay, okay. I'm not even f just free of the sense of separation, because oh, I feel so separate. No, I'm not free of separation. I'm free of union also. Union. But we want to be united. So I'm free of these interrelated opposites. He says here, I'm freedom itself. Don't put too many things on the words. I'm freedom itself. I'm everywhere like space. Can I just talk a little bit about this? Because the last sentence, we can even be, yes, you know, I'll check with you. I'm not only free of purity and impurity. Uh, okay, Guruji, I got you, I got you, I got you. I'm not only free of bondage, I'm free of liberation. Um, yeah, yeah, I got you, got you, got you. Okay? Not only free of separation. I'm free even of the sense of union. Okay, I'm with you, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm freedom itself. Yeah, good, I'm with you, I got you, got you. I'm everywhere like space. You got me? I'm everywhere like space. Mm. No, could you say that again, Guruji? I'm everywhere like space. Why everywhere like space? I mean, what does it mean? I thought, I'm just here, listening with you. I'm up there as well, too? Yes, but not as a person. If you're understanding with the mind, all those statements are telling you, I am free from bondage and liberation as concepts in the mind. I'm free of myself as a person also. I'm free of being the good person and bad person. Yes, yes, okay, with you. I'm freedom itself. I thought you had to be free of something, like okay, freedom itself. What is freedom itself? 
I'm everywhere like space. Well, now we see it like poetry, Guruji. It's a koan or something. Because who can be everywhere like space? I need to go back to Brazil. Can I just be there like space? So that's cor- incorrect understanding. What is there without travelling? And can this be answered only in the mind to your satisfaction? How to verify what here is called the Avaduta, that the Treya is speaking? How to verify? I'm going to tell you again. I just did already also. I was everywhere, but I'm everywhere like space. That doesn't seem a reasonable thing to say. He must be making some kind of metaphor. How can you be everywhere? And if you are listening like that, it is because you have captured yourself in the shape of the person you imagine yourself to be. Oh, so I can be everywhere? No. You can't be everywhere. You are right here, sitting on that yellow cushion. (laughs) Then why is he saying I can be everywhere like space? (laughs) When you continue to look, and see, yes, this can be seen. Yes, my idea of myself also is seen. Ooh, yes, yes. My body also is seen somehow. There's a seeing which is not done only by these eyes in your head. Perceiving doesn't rely only upon the eyes or on the senses. On a deeper seeing in which anything perceivable, even imagined things, subtly manifest and are perceived. That which perceives them, can that be perceived? These are questions for now. This is not homework. Whatever I am speaking with you now, must be here now also. Because it says, it is beyond time. It is not limited. Don't try to be everywhere, first of all. I, I'll let you off, okay? Don't try to be everywhere. Don't try and go don't don't try to be everywhere in this way. He doesn't mean that. What does it mean? I'm everywhere. If I am not the person I imagine myself to be, if I'm not even as a fact, I'm not even the body, because this body, I say is my body. This body does not know me. This body does not know. If I'm unconscious somewhere, the body, I'm, I'm, I'm unconscious, and somebody goes, uh, "Is anybody called Muji in here?" This body's not going to say, "Ah, it's not going." It doesn't know you. Your body doesn't know you. Your body is not you. It is your. You may call it your temple. It's a lovely word, or your instrument, or just your body. It's your body. Your means. If I say mine. Or yours, these are possessive terms, means that that belongs to me. My body was so exhausted, my body, not me. Can you understand what I'm speaking here now? My body. My eyes, my right eye is seen about I would say 80, 85 percent good seeing. My left eye is about 30. What sees seeing? And the capacity to see. My ear, my right ear is very... Ah, I can hear that. But my left ear, it's oddly coming. What is even aware of the capacity of the ears, uh, or the mind to hear through the ears even, you see? My hearing, my sight, my relationship has fallen apart. My life is over. My life, not me. My house, my family, not me. My faith, my religion, my prime minister, my home, my passport, 
not me. Who is me? And all these things can be lost. You say, my loss. Who is me? Who is I? That which is aware. But is even aware of the one it's taken to be itself as the one who lost something. But is this clear? How can it be clear? Not just clear in the mind as an idea, but cleared out as a strong belief. I will finish where I started. Whatever you can perceive, and you know it is not stable, it is not the truth. That which is aware of instability or even stability, that one is beyond them. That is true. That is true. Is that a truth that something believes? No, it is truth. I am here at the place of truth. If I am asking you to believe this, I am not really asking you to believe it. I am asking if this is clear for you. How can it become more clear? By keep sitting and looking. If you have this much attentiveness and yearning, because even as I speak, the nature of truth is that when it meets the sense of the untruth, the untruth will resist it. Some of you may start to feel very tired right now. It's still only just after four o'clock. You may feel I want to go to bed, or even I just feel like I need a sandwich or to go for a walk. This is the mind feeling like mm, something like this. And this, this energy in us, we have lived with and obeyed for a very long time. I'm not asking you to change your energy. I'm asking you to take a look. Don't identify so quickly. Observe for as long as you can without logging in with your identity. Who can follow this? Who will continue to follow this? Thank you. Okay. Then, if this is true, I'm here for you to come and verify. Not just with words, because I will not just listen to you. Because many people go, yes, I've been there, Gorgia. I've done it. Can I have the certificate? I want to go and teach. I'm saying, shut up. <laughs> not you. The one in whose presence, whose presence is shining in that understanding, does not have to say. They are naturally attractive to those who venerate truth, that seek or love God, and who is here to discover the truth. You are naturally attracted. Not go around going, I am the one. No, no, no. You don't have to say anything at all. Move in your life. Your very presence, in fact, without intention, communicates something more deep than your mind can ever do. You become the embodiment of love and peace and health and joy. When your life becomes the evidence that God exists. But it's not enough to say, you read it, oh yes, I got it. No. You must stay with it until you are not able to not stay with it. That it stays with you as you. In fact, it doesn't come from anywhere, because it is not located elsewhere. It is here, only to be discovered, to be recognised and honoured. I feel happy within myself, because in the space of mm, an hour or so, I feel enough in my heart, I communicate something, but now that understanding must detonate in you, must combust into spirit in you. That is called sadhana. 
you continue to look, not just to believe. We think in this world, if you study something, some people have a very strong intellect, they grasp something, and we call it knowledge. But if it is not known in your heart, in a time of great challenge or stress, whatever you think you know, only mentally, it will collapse under pressure. Therefore, it's important that you just stay with it. At first, it might feel, oh, my mind is too strong for this. Don't give in to that. Continue. Continue. Grace is with you. Your mind cannot do it by itself. Your person cannot do it by itself. Because largely, what you conceive of to be your person is mostly shaped in the mind. But you are not just your mind. You are infinitely greater than what your mind can present. I don't want you just to hear this, or to say, I believe, or agree, or disagree, but to discover and prove if my words are true, when followed, are not true. And I'm not going to tell you, you need six months to find out. Some of you know already, beyond mental knowing, your life is becoming more and more this. I don't have anything else to share for the moment, like this. And nothing more is needed for now. Thank you. Don't pay attention to what is happening in your mind. Pay attention to the state of your being. Different thing. Don't look to the mind, oh, mm, mm, I thought you would have talked to me about it. No, don't look to your mind. Pay attention to your being. you have to do to perceive them? Nothing. This is the marvellousness of consciousness. Even what are you doing to understand? Simply because you choose, and you are open, understanding happens. In the mind, it might tell you, you have to try harder, try, go. Sometimes mind may appear with a spiritual voice. Climb that hill. <laughs> go, go. <laughs> Guruji is going to be disappointed. <laughs> you know. Sometimes it may speak like this, but you must discern how to discern when you have offered your life. I'm here for truth. Please rid me of ego and replace me with you. Merge me in my heart. Something begins to work in your favour. It speaks in the way of intuition. You may feel, I just don't feel to do that. You can follow that. Another time you feel, I don't feel to do that, and you know it's from the mind. You say, No, I've got to do it. How can I, how can I learn intuition? You cannot learn intuition. If your heart yearns for truth, the grace of God is with you. More and more you will experience that you are going a certain way, and someone comes, Hello, sister, how are you? Can I have a word with you? You say, No, no, I'm late. I've got to go. I've got to go. And you didn't discern that this one is sent by the higher power, because you prioritize your intention. 
And if you had given your attention for a moment, being very neutral and empty, but just watching how it happens, you may find that an experience takes place that if you had gone with your mind, it would never have given this joy. When you listen and develop that sensitivity inside your heart, you will not know what bad things you missed, because you didn't experience them also. And what if you did experience somebody beat you up? Actually, this also, if you are smart, it would do something good for you too. Whatever happens, you can learn from it. But the more you listen with your heart, there is no need for your life to suffer needlessly. And you will come at some point to tell me if you are discovering this to be true or not. If you are really understanding and really seeing, your terrestrial life will also change. The way in which your life flows will change. It has to. It cannot be just a mental discovery. Thank you again. I'll just spend a moment or two to sit. <laughs> Not because I have to, but for the joy of being here. Let go of everything. Don't be anything.
Vlad, you explain to her that even if she doesn't understand everything I say, something good is happening inside her. Bless you that your truest and deepest urge in the heart be fulfilled. And uh, my attitude and uh, connection with you is that in my heart I I meet you as truth, and that uh, that the truth you are. I will converse with you on this basis, and to remind you that your life is uh, the expression of a higher consciousness, of a pure love, and that an opportunity is here for you each to discover this more completely, to your complete joy and peace.